What's up everyone? I'm Melissa Elise and you're watching Melissa Elise TV. Welcome to my July book club. In this video, I'll be reviewing An Echo in the Bone by Diana Gabaldon, book number seven in the Outlander series, and of course revealing the next book of the month. So let's get to it. There will likely be spoilers in this video, so this is your fair warning. If you don't want spoilers, don't watch past this point. But if you do, please continue. I'll probably jump around a bit with the plot of this book, but for now I'll start at the beginning, which is actually seven chapters before the end of A Breath of Snow and Ashes, when William talks with Brianna and meets her family. In Breath, we only see it from Lord John's perspective as he watches from his window, but this time we get it from William's perspective, and I love that. It has been my wish in this series to get more Lord John and Willie, and so I'm so glad that it finally happened in this book. I also thought it was just a really unique and cool way to start the book. Because correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think Diana has ever gone back and shown an event from a different perspective. She often recaps things that have happened when they become relevant again, but she's never shown an event twice. So I really enjoyed reading it from William's point of view and getting that introduction into his personality. And as with all these books, there's so much going on and at least two plot twists and Echo was no different other than the amount of perspectives we get to see. Of course, we have Claire, who is the main narrator and the only one that's in first person. And then we have Jamie and a little of young Ian in third person narration, as well as Brianna and Roger. But then we also got William in this book and more Lord John, and then a new character, Rachel, towards the end. I like to think of them in groupings. So you have Lord John and Willie, who were together at the beginning and the end of the book but for the majority of it they're separate and on their own journeys and then you have Claire, Jamie, and Ian but Ian goes off on his own a few times as well and then you have Brianna and Roger in the future but everybody has their own sections of the story and are separated from each other at some point and I think because of that the story as a whole ends up feeling very fragmented and for me it kind of lacked a feeling of forward motion or a clear goal. Of course, Jamie, Claire, and Ian's main goal was to go back to Scotland and get Jamie's printing press, which they eventually achieve. And I think you could say that Lord John's goal was to find out what the guy Percival Wainwright, or Beecham, his stepbrother, was up to. But then that turned into him needing to help Henry, his nephew, and bring him back to England. And with all the different groupings, it was rather hard to track with any one storyline. But as with each of these books, things really take off near the end. I love, love, love the end of this book so much, mainly because of young Ian and Rachel. So Rachel and her brother, Dr. Denzel Hunter, are new characters, and Ian comes across them on one of his solo missions, but he comes across William first, who's like lost in a swamp, and William is hurt, so Ian leaves him in the care of the hunters, and they help him, and they get him back on his feet, and then they all go off looking for the army. William, of course, the British army, and the hunters are looking for the Continental Army. Ian and Rachel meet up again in the Continental Camp, and they share this passionate kiss and basically proclaim their love for each other. But then everything goes to pot when Ian ends up killing a guy who was trying to blackmail Jamie for killing Dougal way back at, before Culloden. Well, in the resulting fight, Rolo gets shot trying to protect Ian, and he has to flee, so he leaves Rolo in Rachel's care. This was quite the unexpected love story, and one with a lot of complications. First off, Rachel is a Quaker, and Ian is definitely not. And then they get separated when Ian has to run, and then again when he goes to Scotland with Jamie and Claire. But then even when he comes back, he has to fight arch bug because at the beginning of the book he accidentally killed mrs bug in defense of his uncle but arch vows to kill the woman that ian loves thankfully both rachel and ian survive but they still have to overcome their religious differences which they do in just such a beautiful accepting way they both accept who they are and express how devoted they are to one another and with all that ian has been through i'm just so happy for him and and I really do like Rachel. The other reason why I love the ending with 
Ian and Rachel is because it's really the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of a crazy series of events where Jamie comes back from the dead, which I'll talk about in a minute. William finds out that Jamie is his father and Jenny Murray, Jamie's sister, comes to America. I really appreciate Diana's subtleties in this book. Even with all the moving parts, she crafted it so well, particularly the plot line of Jamie's death. Claire has to go back to America to perform surgery on Henry Christian, Marsley and Fergus's youngest, while Jamie stays in Scotland to care for Jenny as the older Ian is dying. Jamie writes to Claire to let her know that Ian is passed and the name of the ship that he's going to take back. Well, Jamie and Jenny, who decides to come back with him, do not make it onto the boat because it decided to leave before it was supposed to. But Claire doesn't know that, and Lord John gets word that the ship sank, so they both think that Jamie is dead, and John insists that Claire marry him for her protection and the protection of her family because she's about to be arrested as a spy. I would never wish Jamie any harm, but I really enjoy Claire and John's dynamic. And it's crazy that they slept together, but it almost makes sense because who else could even remotely mourn Jamie the same way as Claire but John? Thankfully though, Jamie is alive. Though their reunion is short-lived as he comes running from British soldiers and is forced to take John hostage just to get out alive. But before they escape, William comes in and he and Jamie are finally face to face and the truth can't be denied any longer. One of the things that kind of frustrated me about this story, but in a good way I guess, was the fact that everyone was just pretending that they could avoid William and keep this secret, even though they all encounter him like multiple times. Ian meets him like three or four times and even calls him cousin. Claire meets him again after a battle and Jamie even talks to him at one point but they're all just like no we'll keep our heads down and just not say anything. But then other people start to notice the resemblance and comment on it which was actually pretty funny but I was so happy when they were finally face to face. But William was not happy. He throws a huge tantrum and practically destroys John's house and he storms out. But then Jenny walks in with her cute line of like father, like son. This is my absolute favorite ending of any of the books in this series thus far, even over Drums of Autumn, which is still my favorite book in the series. But so many awesome things that I've just been waiting patiently to happen, happened at the end of this book. So I just, love it so much and I've never been more excited for the next book. There are quite a few things that have been left unfinished in the end. Jamie and John are on the run, Jenny has only just shown up, and her and Claire's relationship was really the only regret I've had in the entire Outlander series because they have yet to reconcile. So I'm hopeful that they will in the next book. And then Brianna and Roger's story was cut short right as Roger and Buckley, his ancestor and the guy that was responsible for getting him hung, who is also a time traveler and has ended up in the future, they go back through the stones because they think this guy Rob Cameron took Jem. But it turns out he didn't and he shows up at Lollybrook and tells Brianna to take him to the gold. There are at least three or four other side stories that are as usual kind of crazy and mind-blowing but even those haven't found their conclusion yet so i have a lot of expectations for book eight speaking of book eight written in my own heart's blood is july's book of the month and again i'm so excited for this one i can't wait to read it but before i move on to that i want to hear from you guys what did you think of this book did anybody find it hard to track with like i did or did you just love every minute of it let me know what you think in the comment section as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next month if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new here, consider subscribing for more book reviews.